So let's start with where we just talked. Kirk Cousins, game-winning drives. How many will he have? We'll go around the horn if you're watching on YouTube, and that begins with Luke Inman. Uh, somebody's got to remind me. How many did Kirk Cousins have last season? Four. Three or four. Four last year. Four. Three fourth-quarter comebacks, four game-winning drives. Okay, three comebacks, four game winning drives. Okay, I think obviously you have to think about the defensive situation. How many opportunities is he going to have to actually lead this team come back? I'm going to go with four again. I'm going to say four. All right. All right. For for me, I think uh, one element of why he had, you know, quote unquote, so many game winning drives last year, a quarter of the season is because of how many close games they were in. Uh, I believe mm -hmm. 14. They tied uh, the 2015 Ravens for the most close games uh, ever. Uh, in an NFL season. I don't think that's going to happen again, and those close games are what enable game-winning drive opportunities. Now, mind you, his rate of game-winning drives was still low. I think it will uh, maintain that same kind of rate. I think he'll have two. I'll go with three. Ron. I'll just put myself right in the middle there. Yeah, I'm going to go three as well. I think it's a step down from last year, but not a huge step. I think he's probably more efficient in those situations, but he'll have fewer of those opportunities. All right, that was nice and uh, nice, tidy, gentlemen. Let's go Dalvin Cook rushing yards and continue going around the horn. Luke? I'm going to go with 1,100. Dalvin averages, what, 11.3 games in his career per season. Obviously, you know, he, what, rookie season, he played, what, three and a half games. So that lowers that average a bit. Um, but typically, he does miss two to three to four, maybe games-ish a season. Um, I still think he's going to be very efficient when he's in there. But keep it in mind that, you know, he may be dinged up for two or three games. I think it could be even higher. But I'm going to go with 1,108 rushing yards in 2022. Go ahead. Vault me, Sam. Play this back to me at the end of the season when I nail it. <laughs> 1,108. Eight. I love the specificity. Mm -hmm. um, I think that uh, I, I think that it is uh, overstated how many games Dalvin Cook will miss. But I'm going to end up with a very similar uh, prediction to Luke. I'm just going to go off of my fantasy article over the Athletic, kind of trying to predict who the Vikings players or how the Vikings players will do. I think the issue for him is going to he's have fewer opportunities to run the ball because it's a an offense that runs the ball less and might give it to more ball carriers. So I think he's going to go from 20 uh, or a little bit over 20 carries a game over the last two years to something like 18. So for me, my prediction ended up being, I'm going to be even more specific than Luke, 1,169.8 yards. Woo! I love it. So, and to Arif's point, uh, I, I agree. He, I think he does have less attempts this year. I just think they're more efficient. I think he's going to see less stack boxes. Mm -hmm. I think they set up the run by, uh, um, you know, passing first and things like that. But I do agree with you. I think he does have less touches per game than he did last season. So is eleven sixty nine was your prediction or eleven seventy? Point eight. Your point eight. Eleven sixty nine. Point okay. Eight. That. That is important to note. All right, Luke Braun. All right, so I'm thinking like something like 82 a game. Sounds about fair. Sounds about like in the same range as everybody else is in. Say he misses three games, 14 times 82. That'd be 1148. I'll go with that. Wow, we're all We're right all there. very similarly wow. thinking. So this was my be calculation. Bold, be bold. I figured 225 as the number of carries, which is a reduction at increased efficiency, so 4.9 per carry, that arrives at 11.02. So I know it feels like I just price is right at you, Luke Inman. I'm sorry about that. But be tough. if it goes below 1,100, because we're not necessarily, we, it's okay if you go over in this game. So if he's under 1,100, Luke Inman wins. So you're actually in a pretty good spot. <laughs> Justin Jefferson receiving yards. Luke I Inman. I play this right. Ah, oh boy. Um, <clears throat> I got to look ahead here. Are we going to do receptions as well? No, we're just doing receiving yards. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say 1688, and I know Cooper Cup. I mean, what a season. 191 targets, 145 catches, 1,947 yards. Um, I do think Justin Jefferson has the best statistical season of his career. I think he catches well over 100 balls. I think he isn't in that Cooper Cup role. Um, but 1688, I think maybe to some even falls short of some expectations that we put on him. Still an incredible season. 1688, final answer, Sam. 
All right, uh, I'm going to say that Justin Jefferson does an exact repeat at 16-16. Uh, the reason for that, I think, is, uh, you know, he's been completely healthy his whole career. That doesn't mean he will continue to be completely healthy. I think he misses one or two games, but I do think that he is going to get more yards per game and a slightly more efficient offense. That's going to throw him a little bit further downfield. So more receptions per game, more yards per game, more yards per reception, maybe a couple fewer games. So I'm going to go 16-16. Nice. We are being way too responsible. JJ Do says it. he's going Go over 2K. It. I'm Go not going to tell him he's wrong. 2010. Let's go. He's setting records. Over Let's 2000. Go. Somebody's got to represent Justin Jefferson's own opinion on this. <laughs> you know, it, it's one th one thing that doesn't get talked about enough with the Cooper Cup season. He did play all 17 games. I mean, it, it, Reef's right. If he JJ misses even just one or two games, so hard to reach kind of the stats that were, you know, everybody, even nationally, is expecting from JJ at this point. Obviously, hope he does it, um, but uh, really tough to play 17 games. He's done it the last two years, so I'm going to assume no, he does right. it again. Mm -hmm. I'm going to add one catch per game from last year, which might be modest, but I think 125 as your total is still a pretty good total. It's At 15 bad. yards per reception, I'm going 18.75 league leader boy. in receiving. 18.75. JJ. All right, Adam Thielen TDs. He's been a touchdown monster. How many does he have this year, Luke? Uh, even when he misses, what, three to four games, tweaks his ankle, rolls that ankle maybe in London, something like that, he's still going to get 12 TDs this year, Sam. I mean, he's are a you, red zone are machine. Are you insulting Nobody the scored... field quality in London? Is the grass no, going to be Tottenham? slippery? No, absolutely not. No, <laughs> uh, I, I would never. I would never. Um, besides Devontae <laughs> Adams, nobody scored more red zone touchdowns as a receiver than Adam Thielen in the last two years. You're right. I expect that to keep up, even in a little bit different role here, different uh, offensive scheme. I still think he ends up with 12 touchdowns. Yeah, I think that his yardage total will remain somewhat limited. And generally speaking, mm -hmm. receivers produce about one touchdown for every 100 yards. But that's, you know, that's general, right? I don't think that's Adam Thielen. I think that, you know, the Vikings recognize him specifically as a red zone weapon. Whether or not they're right, they're going to treat him that way, which means he's going to get targets in the red zone. I think that he'll uh, be able to beat regression once again. I think that he's going to, maybe not 12, I'm going to go with 10 uh, touchdowns because you know, he's going to miss a couple of games here and there, and, uh, and the Vikings are going to have more receivers available to them in the red zone. But 10 for me is the prediction. Bet on lines over under for Adam Thielen has gone down in touchdowns. It's seven now. It's probably because of uh, things I've What written. do they know? <laughs> Insider info. They probably are. Uh, well, neither Luke nor Arif projected anything for they they basically did the optimistic thing of i'm gonna what if he misses half the season so i'm gonna go with seven as i do still think even if he misses half the season he can still like have a couple of games where he gets two touchdowns and like bring it back but i'm gonna go with the over under just to zig while everybody else is zagging I'm go with seven he's going chalk you know i think there, that's definitely possible luke because of the herb smith effect in the red zone jefferson in the red zone osborne vulturing um, maybe being a little more effective running the ball in the red zone, which they were not last year. I'm still going to – I want to do this because I want to thread the needle and make the most difficult prediction to win, and I'm going to go 11 because I have to hit it on the nose, and I feel pretty good about it. Um, so right in between Luke and Arif. Luke, you're hoping for uh, for a low – Luke Braun, I should say. You uh, You need it below nine for you to win. Luke Inman, you need 12 or more. I'm emotionally right. hedging against an Adam Thielen injury. You know, Luke Braun did turn to me at training camp practice. He said, you know, Thielen, he looks a tick slower, but you know what? I could still see him putting up some three-catch, three-touchdown type of games just because he's still, I mean, he's still that guy down in the red zone for sure.